on the west oh yes we are live we are live let me quit my whatsapp we don't want to see the notifications hi everyone um so great to, to be here today um thank you so much for joining our session about how to start a career in data science and ai um very excited uh, about the next hour and a half, two hours. Uh, we also want that um, to be a very interactive session. So please use the chat uh, and ask questions. Um, already say people say, already see people say hello, hi everyone. Uh, and uh, yeah, very quickly about um, us here. Um, so with me today um, is uh, Nidhi, uh, Shirish, and Achinkya. And uh, Prakash, uh, another person of uh, the Data Driven Science team, uh, might join as well. So we are Data Driven Science. We are an artificial intelligence uh, training company providing educational content um, and uh, yeah, help people to build a career in that field. Very exciting field. And um, oh, hi, everyone. When will we start? Patiksha, when will it start? We are starting now. Hope you hear us. Uh, so, um, yes. Um, and uh, it's great that we can uh, have that session here today. Um, and uh, we hope that you will learn something, that you will um, have the opportunity to yeah learn more about data science and what it means how you can get started and that's the, the that's the goal of the session so i will now hand it over to shirish he will say a few words and then achinkya he is the the main guy of today and he will lead the session um and again please ask questions we want to make it as interactive as possible we do have slides of course we'll um um do this uh, um uh, session we, we we prepared but we also want to hear from you all right Sh shirish hey hi all good afternoon this is shirish zamborkar i'm the founder of book my canopy and book canopy private limited has brought this webinar uh, for singhagarh college of engineering and we are really thankful for uh, it department electronics telecom department and computer department for helping us organize this webinar on uh, this huge scale. So we have got almost 400 registrations, more than 400 registrations for this webinar. So uh, this is like telling us how much interest uh, this college has for data science and AI. We are really thankful for this kind of registrations and interest. So uh, Book My Canopy is a venue aggregator platform. We provide uh, different kind of venues for different companies uh, by which they can showcase their products and uh, that's it from my side i would like uh, i would like i would not waste any time for that i would hand it over to ajinkya okay cool let, let me just start sharing my screen and then we are good to go okay so the session introduction to data science unless you have been living under a rock you will definitely know what data science field is whether it is reading on news whether it is some videos you might be seeing or even tony stark was featured in a documentary all about ai so is you know that ai is a big thing when youtube makes a documentary featuring tony stark who maybe marvel cannot afford as a iron man now so just to show you how much money is in this field. So thankfully, we are here to actually help you become a data scientist. Because it is one thing to know what is a upcoming future trend. It is completely another thing to ride on that trend and take advantage of it. This is the window of opportunity. And if we can take advantage of it, it is going to be really good for everyone here for their career so let's get started what is the agenda so we will primarily look at uh, four key points why data science how to learn a data science and then how do we get hired so that our career starts you see none of the things which we are talking about none of them exist in silo okay 
they are extremely important when we have to consider that what is the impact of this uh, in my life and you know how do i get where i want to go so how do i get hired what is data science all of these things are part of our agenda today okay so before you know i start let me just quickly introduce you know instead of me shuffling between everyone here i am just gonna you know speed through this and hopefully uh, you get an idea about who all we have here to give you a multivariate perspective at this field of data science so yan who is you know who you saw in the beginning is founder of the data driven science uh, which is a company focusing on data science trainings but the fun part is before here he was actually in udemy the company which is for delivering i would say training over internet so he was director for international markets and development and that involved india so that was heavily featured strategic work ensuring that education in india picks up through udemy so uh, and then before again into product development so product marketing manager at juniper this is also a big mnc and all of this experience in the silicon valley okay so data driven science is out of silicon valley and all of this is from there itself so and then we have prakash here with us who is now doing doing phd in uh, deep learning and soon you might uh, even read about his startup if he starts one so uh, extremely experienced person who has worked as a lead data scientist in i couldn't pronounce the name of the company so i'm not going to pronounce it <laughs> before that he spent almost you know 6 7 years at as a you know uh, ai engineer at samsung samsung research uh, you know taking data science projects from start to finish to even possibly deployment a lot of work involving actual data science in actual products and before that uh, started as an associate consultant at cl and we have nidhi with us and she is also a very interesting addition here because she is the proof of how it is possible to become a data scientist even if your background is not from computer science so uh, she did data science internships but uh, 2008 graduate from coep and uh, from 2008 and she was the uh, she actually had attended similar session which we are having in sivagad but in coep so her starting point is exactly the same starting point of everyone here in this class so she started like you and then she decided to shift to data science and uh, she is now a data science consultant she now conducts workshops now uh, her you know horizons are only broadening even now so it doesn't matter your background it doesn't matter your pre existing experience anybody can move to data science and make a dent in the field as long as you do it in the right way and i am here to ensure that you do it in the right way so myself ajinkya kole i'm machine learning trainer at google data engineering and machine learning trainer but before i actually work before joining google i was a self taught data scientist and i consulted as a curriculum consultant and a trainer under data driven science so yan and me we start uh, we were you know in this together since beginning and uh, you know that is how i am in the training so in the training field for more than 5 6 years now uh, but started as a software developer okay so 2011 graduate i myself have almost a decade of experience same for prakash same for yan so together we have 30 35 plus years of experience uh, and uh, we are hoping to bring you clarity on data science and hopefully it helps okay so that's enough about introduction now let's start with the material okay so whenever we talk about data science you might have seen this why learn data science okay and the answer to why learn data science is you know articles like these okay these articles are actually extremely interesting wherein they say data science is the sexiest job of the 21st century we have started with 2020 the demand of this field is still high so whenever i read this thing like sexiest job of the century it's like thor is my favorite superhero and uh, i was surprised at the fact that how can you compare a job to you know, you know so a word which is generally associated with models but you see the job which data science involves it is extremely exciting in what i mean by that is the work which we are uh, you know doing here is extremely impactful so it is like we are leaving a legacy the products are amazing we are making changes in the technology which we are going to you know uh, leave behind so that's why i think it is a really exciting work and uh, if that doesn't get you this will get you <laughs> the salary 
so if you know if the work is not enough then you all of course have money and uh, strictly speaking it was the re my reason for starting in data science was the high salaries i mean it is definitely true and then it it turned out that the kind of work i was doing was also interesting so uh, you can choose your poison right you know you can choose a or b it doesn't matter but the way things are now the field is still booming there is a huge requirement of skilled people let me repeat if has has any of you who have seen this mass recruitment video from aib have you guys seen that video so if you have seen that video in that video the mass recruitment is all about people not necessary skilled people but people data science is a field where we need skilled people so as long as you have skills you don't have to worry about the job that's the reality of the situation so mistaking that anyone can get in uh, is going to be harmful but assuming that i will not be able to get in despite my knowledge that is also a mistake so like i said in the beginning nidhi started from a mechanical background and uh, one year of studies and she got in uh, started with this field so anyone can get into this as long as you are knowledgeable so that's the key distinction i wanted to make okay so talking about demand versus supply the way things are moving now i have seen that many colleges many students they are actually uh, interested in this field of data science and what it has led to is it has led to increasing of the supply when the supply increases and demand actually in this case is actually same for field of data science so let's say demand is same but supply is increasing so eventually there is going to be a point where they intersect means after that the supply is going to be more than the demand actually the demand is not flat it will keep increasing but at a slower rate so it looks like these kinds of graph before this happens if you get started in this field it will be helpful because you would have become already established so even though it is 2021 it is not late at all there is still a lot of time to get expert in the field there is still a lot of demand in india the impact of covid is not going to be long lasting our companies are going to still adopt the intelligence provided by artificial intelligence and job security will be present so uh, ensure that you have higher skills that is the only point so you have to have good skills and as long as have you have high skills then it is more than enough to get started in this field okay so uh, let me talk about this is why another point which i feel is this is the field of infinite opportunities genuinely you take any example okay you take any example so let me take a example in this case speech to text okay i am enabling this feature in powerpoint which is converting what i am speaking to english in text live the accuracy of this is actually pretty good okay so this is a artificial intelligence example where in speech to text is done okay now this is not perfectly accurate but if we think in terms of money how much money can we make by having this system let's search okay so if we search speech to text apis there is one of one companies which is in the world voice uh, gain ai so let's search how much do they charge for this product which does speech to text so let's search voice gain ai okay if not that we will search google clouds uh, let's search azure speech to text and uh, rakuten also should work uh, and uh, let me just search voice voice gain which is the company uh, which i was talking about so speech to text which we are talking about it is actually a expensive thing to do you will be charged uh, approximately i think 10 dollars for an hour 10 dollars for an hour is the pricing of speech to text so once you develop a product once you develop a product which does this speech to text that product can be sold masses and masses 
to whether it is training company whether it is even netflix where instead of creating subtitles manually you can create subtitles via thing like this so just an example even a simple problem like speech to text can be applied in infinite industries it could be applied in service industry for let's say cross collaboration across teams where a lot of communication is via voice it can be used in call centers though your voice can be transcribed live and then you can make summary of that using deep learning and do stuff on it so it is a field of infinite opportunities which has just begun the only constraint is our creativity here how you can apply it that is the only constraint here one of the examples which is actually really fun is this company called as deep motion so when this company started the entire point of view of this company was let's make systems which move realistically so deep motion was a simple animation creation for video games if you play pubg or call of duty in those games the characters move quite realistically and you might not believe it the amount of time it takes to render them so that they feel natural is extremely high even in games like gods of war the dogs or wolves their animation to render them realistically they study actual dogs and wolves uh, for extremely long amount of time analyzing their videos so that their movement is realistic now this company this company is giving us this product wherein you shoot a human person acting and that human person is converted to a 3d character so imagine a movie like up wherein mr fredrickson or that kid or anybody else if there is someone else a human which is acting and simply with a video camera that is being converted to a 3d character instantaneously how much impactful it is for animation companies how much impactful it is for video game companies how impactful it is for companies like netflix you see in this times of covid where we are consuming content uh, via amazon prime or netflix or hotstar the quality content is not enough we also need quantity because just in india we have a billion people in the world we have 8 billion people so these tools are going to create a market just in the gaming industry entertain in, uh, industry which is e more than any other industries you will not believe video uh, industry video gaming industry will soon be bigger than ipl cricket industry and a product which can make impact in such companies impact in such uh, opportunities is going to be insanely high another product in talking about infinite opportunities is let's say alphago so alphago is a deep learning algorithm which google built that product actually built a human in the most complex game on invented by humanity i guess this going game called as go okay this product was actually google's intellectual property they used it once to uh, reduce the expenditure in their data centers by more than 30 40% okay so it it costed them more than millions of dollars more than hundreds of millions of dollars maybe not 100 maybe in ranges of 10 uh, to build this so you can imagine how valuable this product is but what if you could do this for free okay there are other games which are played professionally now games like shogi games like go games like chess who need training softwares like chessbase or there are other companies whose entire revenue income is from building training systems for that game so i am learning tennis now and we have coaches who help in learning the tennis but if you want to hire a high quality coach like the coach of maybe federer you can't afford him correct but if we have a ai system which can coach even beginner level players up to that extremely high quality in uh, coaching that is going to be an incredible product so take any example there are infinite opportunities if only you look for them 
example for looking for them is this thing called as lc0 if you search on internet lc0 is a open source implementation built by people like everyone here they have their own job they have their own let's say uh, education but while as a side project they build this open source implementation of a thing which google treats as an intellectual property so you see lc0 its source code is available it is available for us for utilization all it takes for someone to take it and apply it into some other field so the this field is because it is such a nascent field there is no shortage of opportunities for us to apply so lc0 is now actually extremely popular whether it is games of chess games of go and anybody can use it facebook also released their own platform uh, a way of playing go so that is open go if you simply search for it so you see if you can't code there are things which are already built you can use them as well so you can build it from scratch you can use the things which are already built and leverage it to uh, take advantage of infinite opportunities offered by this new field okay so hopefully this helps you decide uh, how to go about doing this okay so if you are inspired to learn data science congratulations but it's still too early you see when everybody begins in data science it is like oh excitement oh shiny oh uh, a, a field which go gives a lot of money but just like game of thrones in the beginning it looks easy when you start doing it you realize the field is way bigger than you thought so if you do not get the complexity of the field under control the end is as disappointing as the end of game of thrones you see we don't want to be killed by the very field which we are trying to enter and trust me i have taught more than let's say thousands of students on how to get started in this field of data science and less than 10 or 20 might have actually followed the path why because they do it the wrong way i try i am trying to give a simpler way because i know the complexity of this path but if you follow a harder way you will actually never be able to make progress so nidhi was here you know who started focusing on the development part if you focus on development you can get started in this field sooner if you focus on things which are actually complex which is generally the fear of many people you know uh, my fear is oh data science is too complex what do i do uh, is it it is like i don't love maths that much what do i do so you know these things are the common problems which uh, you know lead to people for uh, never being able to uh, you know get anywhere in this field so please please follow a path which is easier please don't go the route which is harder and as long as you do that you are guaranteed to get into this field without much efforts i didn't say you will be get into the field without any efforts i said without much efforts there is big difference between these two sentences so efforts are required but if you put them the wrong way all the efforts are wasted so most common question i get is do i need maths to learn machine learning answer is no there are many different ways of getting into the field i don't focus on maths prakash in his job he has definitely focused on maths more than i have so it depends it depends on the situation it depends on what is your role which you are intending to pursue but as long as you know that there is different ways of becoming data scientist it helps you choose the way which is suitable for you so if you are if you have failed maths two three times in your let's say engineering and it, it and somebody tells you that you need maths to become data scientist you will of course give give up on that dream but when somebody tells you there are other approaches possible then that gives you confidence to pursue this path okay so what do we want become data scientist how do we become one attend such sessions brave start any such session you will always find many people who are interested but what to do after that that is left vague okay the whole enthusiasm in the starting point is as long lasting as new year resolutions i am sure many people would have had new year resolutions i also have and they fail inevitably 
simply because we don't have a sustainable way of continuing what to do afterwards. So we will tell you what are the common mistakes and how to avoid them. And if you want to take this path, we can figure out how you can learn by maybe through a workshop or teaching stuff online. So Yan or uh, Shirish can help us, you know, uh, into figuring out the next path. So I don't want you to go away from the session with saying this thing that we don't know what to do. I want you to go uh, saying, OK, if I want to pursue this, I know what to do next. So going forward, you see supply versus demand thing, which, you know, I already talked about. There is high demand. There is also high supply. So if you want to get a good job, you have to focus on quality of your knowledge. In a situation there might be more people entering into the field. We should not be valuable simply by this thing called as scarcity. So in 19, let's say 98 to 2005 or maybe 2010. These were the times where the skill of IT was scarce. Because the skill was scarce, then many people actually got into the field very easily. Now, if there is large supply of people with that skill, only those who are of top of the lot, they get good jobs, they get good salaries. So if one is dependent only by scarcity, like diamond is, you see diamond, uh, its utility is few in, uh, let's say, industrial areas. But its utility is high for proposal. You know, Valentine's Day is coming and uh, most people think how much value that diamond will be, give, be in proposals. And that is the sheer value of diamond artificially inflated. But in reality, if one focuses more on the utility, what is its use, then that skill becomes valuable. So in data science, also focus on your skill, focus on the use of the skill, and that ensures extremely high um it returns when you start the job if you just focus on oh not many people know this then you know I'll, I'll be set for life that is not the right point of view of looking at things okay so let me just repeat this point one more time and maybe one last time that uh you don't have to you don't have to know maths to you know do this but you simply have to learn stuff which is required okay so a final clarification the amount of time considering one to two hours a day it will take you at most six months at most 10 months to learn data science at most so in less than a year if your package might start above eight lakhs per year or 10 lakhs per year it is an incredible starting point i myself learned data science in around six months while my college was going on i'm sure nidhi here also uh, can attest to a similar time frame now, this doesn't mean if you are taking the wrong approach, it will still take you 10 months. So take the right approach and then the amount of time it requires to get into the field is extremely less. You won't have to, uh, you know, uh, just toil away without any returns ever for all the free time you have. That is not how it will be. OK, cool. So uh, this is, you know, how long to learn. And let's start. Let me tell you a tiny bit about what will help you to get hired. OK. Just a second. There is something which is okay. Not not uh, thinking talking about knowledge here. Okay, so you see, to get hired in the field of data science, you need to be knowledgeable. Knowledge is extremely important. Okay, what do I mean by knowledge? A knowledge which is useful, a knowledge which can help us build end-to-end -end solutions. So we don't want those who just know theory. You know, in the colleges, this is the most common mistake. I am a COEP graduate too, from 2011 batch. We focus just on the technical aspects and we get good marks. But, but even 5% of efforts is spent in learning how to build solutions for the company, then your college does not matter. I know people who earn more in their third year of engineering than people who earn after 10 years of experience in IT. Why? Because these the people who focus on the providing value, they are a lot more valuable. Their startup uh, get even evaluation of more than 10, 20 million dollars as well. 
So just check on LinkedIn, Twitter. You'll find those who are in colleges. So Chip Hune, or uh, there are a lot of people on uh, LinkedIn and Twitter. They are, they are extremely new in the field, but extremely respected in the entire industry all over the world. So know how to build solutions, know what are the common mistakes, have actually a portfolio of the projects which you have worked on. So have ready solutions which will help you in your resume. You see, resume is not about copy pasting. Resume is about showing what you have done. If you have really done, which is what you have done is really good, then companies will come to hire you. You don't have to wait for a campus placement. You don't have to be anxious about, oh, I've sent my resume and I don't know if uh, you know they will get back to me. All of these worries are unfounded. Simply your name should be enough. You see the this dialogue, which is a really common, dialogue, very popular dialogue in uh, Hindi is naam to suna hi hoga. So instead of that naam to suna hi hoga for Shah Rukh Khan, if your name is that, that much valuable to a recruiters, then you will never have shortage of jobs for you. And I have seen people, you know, I myself amongst uh, those whose knowledge is visible, uh, knowledgeable and visible. And as long as both two things are done, uh, once uh, growth is actually guaranteed. So be knowledgeable. And uh, there is some extra things which, you know, on top of your regular learning, if you learn, it's going to help you. So currently for uh, students here, maybe I will not tell about these two things. Uh, and so it's like maybe the most important thing which you could learn in the uh, while learning is cloud computing. Cloud computing, extremely useful extremely important in all kinds of jobs in future. OK, so be knowledgeable. Choose any of this topic alongside data science if you're interested, and that will look extremely good. And when you are good at something, you will get hired. You don't have to worry about anything. You just have to get very good. That's point. Then please understand the difference between knowledge and information. Remembering something is information. Understanding something is knowledge. Companies value understanding because when you understand, you avoid common mistakes. When you simply know information, you are this word which is called as Padat Murkha. So when you have understanding, you are a skilled uh, person who is more valuable. And for knowledge, Socrates is really popular. So if you have not heard of what is Socrates questioning, it is like you ask a question, then somebody gives you an answer. Then you ask why, why, why? It's like at least five levels. And that is Socrates questioning. Apparently, it is supposed to be very helpful in therapies. But, you know, what was the point of view of Socrates? It's like his point of view was, you know, if somebody asked him, tea, sure. Then he is going to, what is tea? How do you know it is in the pot or how do you know it is not, you know, stuff like this. When you go deeper and deeper and deeper, it might be annoying to other people, but it will build a deeper understanding to you. It will take, it will be hard just in the beginning, but then it will become easier and you will be able to apply this thought process in every single aspect of life. So if you read XKCD, the person who writes XKCD, a great example of this when you build such a deep understanding of the world that you can apply it anywhere. So this is a comics XKCD wherein a person who gets married, he must be a mathematician. So he says, as you can see, by late next month, you will have over four uh, husbands or a dozen husbands. Better get a bulk rate on uh, cakes. So what is this? Yesterday is zero marriages. Today, one marriages. And he, this thing of drawing a straight line between these two points is called as linear regression in terms of machine learning. Now, this guy is definitely a data scientist or a mathematician, but not a good one. Because as you know, that you can't fit a line without you have enough data points. If she had, let's say, five, six husbands, and then the last husband uh, is doing this calculation, then you can draw this line. This guy is doing uh, a, a wrong 
pattern he is fitting a wrong pattern where data points are less so you see become a, a person who understands stuff that means you do stuff like this so another comics from the same author and it's like here in this case it might be before they get married maybe she says can i my boyfriend come along so maybe you can use this in next valentine's uh, uh, day which is to come see me immediately next month so then he says oh i'm not your boyfriend she says you totally are then she convinces him how he is her boyfriend by using this plot called as box plot so this box plot plots what is the average time spent with other people what is the 75 percentile time spent with other people and by plotting the time they spend with each other she says trust me i am statistically significant to you and then it's like oh your proof is irref irrefutable this is an example of applying deep understanding in any field and when you develop this understanding it's like uh, whether it is the recruiter or anyone else they will be uh, you know just jumping over each other trying to hire you so this understanding is fun and once you build that understanding be noticeable you see this thing is for, from a book called as purple cow so purple cow book says when all cows are black the cow which is purple will get all the uh, assignments so the other corollary of this thing is when all cows become purple by looking at one successful purple cow then the purple cow should change its color to maybe yellow so you see the first person who applies strategy is smart then everybody copies that strategy that is what has happened first person or first few person who went into data science they got a very good demand they got a very good salary then everyone is becoming the same thing the previous people did and that's the mistake to be visible you have to be different from the rest if i check resumes for data science job now all of them are same there is no difference in uh, any of them because they all try to copy the stuff which worked in the past you have to see what is working now and once you do that you are actually going to be uh, hired immediately so anybody who does this have a few good linkedin articles not copy paste but good articles nowadays i have seen there are too many people who are just writing stuff or projects which are copy paste nothing unique nothing they have done simple copy paste but don't do that build do your own thing so it's like doing copy paste is something which is going to be really bad for your own knowledge and in your own career so don't do copy paste and when you don't do copy paste it is uh, you will develop understanding okay so anybody who has a few github projects or uh, who have posted their projects on reddit or hacker news have posted a few articles on media on linkedin twitter whatever it may be you will get hired if you are not getting hired we will help you get hired we are so confident in matching your skills to recruiters as long as you meet this threshold okay so think on how to do something why to do something and we can help you do both we can help you teach the syntax part we can help you teach the thought process part and uh, it will help you in your career okay so this was all about uh, why to learn data science and how to get hired how to get hired is about being knowledgeable and being visible now maybe quickly i can summarize what is data science okay so what is data science is uh, there is there is another word for it called as artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is into, divided into two parts intelligence which is nothing but our human intelligence and how can we simulate that artificially so how can we simulate that artificially answer is with help of data as long as we have enough data then uh, we can actually uh, learn anything which is needed to learn okay so let's see how does it work so you see in intelligence we understand the problem we learn the stuff related to solve that problem and then we solve it by logic human logic what is artificial intelligence which is instead of relying on logic you know like we do if you rely on history so if you simply rely on history of past occurrences that is artificial intelligence so for example warren buffett 
Warren Buffet, world's richest man through shares, he definitely has built his intuition. But if you can understand what he's doing by simply looking at all of his historical uh, activities, all of his decisions, and if you can learn from his past, then you can become the next Warren Buffet just through data. That is what artificial intelligence is trying to do. Instead of focusing on trying to build logic, which in many cases could be very complex. What you do is you develop a data science model. Which automatically learns from the data, which data scientist is going to ensure that learning is going to happen and then you simply use it. So you see there is no one manually doing the trans speech to text transcription here. There is a programming model in the background, which is a data science model. It is converting what I'm saying to text and it is done through data science. OK, so what is artificial intelligence? Somebody who works with that data science model to ensure that it learns from the data to extract value out of it. So share market, imagine share market or imagine a doctor. If somebody can train a machine learning model to give suggestions based on share market or think up of CAs. What do CA do? They help you uh, doing maybe investment or finance, whatever it may be. If from enough information of doctors or CAs or share market analyst, if you can train a model to learn from that data, you have built an extremely powerful system. That is the summary of data science. We have data, we have model. So data is given to us then model is what we build. So this is our bread and butter when we learn data science. And when we ensure that this model learns from the given data, we have a trained model. And those who can do that are very valuable. OK, so it happens like a simple system like this. Simple A for apple, B for ball, C for cat. As long as I give enough images, it can understand anything. As long as I give enough images, it can learn what an apple looks like, maybe at scale. So if I have an apple farm and or not an apple farm, a fruit farm where I have to automatically categorize the fruits I have uh, extracted from my farm, uh, categorize them according to their fruit type. And then next I want to categorize them by quality import quality export quality and something like this so we can simply do this part with help of data science and it is incredibly useful in uh, starting from factories to even at individual level if you are traveling to a different country a translation app or something which converts speech to text and does translation on it is going to be really useful so if you are a tourism company uh, building such app will help a lot in tourism. So this is how stuff happens. OK, so hopefully uh, you have a quick crash course of what is data science. And now let me tell you a tiny bit about complexity of the data science. OK, so you see it was in probably in 1950s when the conference, which is Dartmouth conference, they said that at most we will need uh, two decades to uh, get a data science uh, system which is actually as smart as human. That was what 70, 80 years ago. OK, and even 2050 is actually still idealistic. People thought that autonomous driving cars will be there by 2022. So in 2017, they thought they were five years away. 2018, they say they are 10 years away. 2019, they are like, oh, I don't know whether it will happen or not. 2020, it's like the things are complex. And because they are complex, we need people who can handle that complexity. Means you guys. OK, so hopefully you learn data science. We can help you in learning that. And hopefully, uh, even if you you know graduate now and you don't have experience and because of COVID, the hiring might be a bit uh, slowed down. None of that will matter. 
to reiterate words of varun chod das chanted from three idiots it says kabil bano this is what we hope that you have gotten from the session as long as you are knowledgeable skilled visible the jobs will come to you example is this website called as facebook instead of spending time on insta or uh, i don't know facebook i don't know if anyone goes on facebook anymore but instead of spending time on these things if you simply go on website called as kaggle you can quantify your skills the quantification is extremely important you can tell people without doubt that out of all the people who are on kaggle you can show that as a irrefutable proof so if you go on kaggle.com there is this thing called as user ranking here so when this site loads i will show you how are the user rankings of everybody in the world on kaggle so number of people on kaggle may be around 1 or 2 lakhs of all the people on kaggle people who are actually taking competing on kaggle seriously are extremely less instead of working on extremely simple projects instead of working on extremely simple projects if you just focus on kaggle rank which helps you uh, prove to others that you can actually do stuff so let's click on user rankings and see how are the user rankings there and how can they help you prove your knowledge so you see around 1 one, 1 one and a half lakh people on kaggle around 86000 people have simply created account and have not done anything here after that you have 57000 people who like new year's resolution uh, decided to do this but after a few weeks they stopped those who continued beyond a few weeks kept at it only 6000 people can call themselves an expert and trust me it will not take you even 3 4 weeks to become someone uh, of this level maybe a month at most a month those who continue you can become master becoming master is just question of practice and time and in less than 6 months you can easily become a master so you will be amongst top 2000 people in the world then you never even have to worry about a job if you check this link called as competitions you will see there are a lot of competitions here which pay millions of dollars if you win this has been happening since 2006 okay if you check there are competitions here with prize there are competitions here with job as a thing so you see uh, companies do recruitment here if you you know attempt any past such things you know these are the will be completed once you will definitely get a job okay so companies start do their recruitment from here there are many rewards here so it's like let's see all categories and let's uh, sort them by rewards so 1.2 million dollars 1.5 million dollars is the price these companies pay for a winning solution and if somebody is paying let's say if this zillo company is paying 1.2 million dollars for the winner they definitely plan to make at least 100 times more money by using this algorithm so just to show you the impact of the skills a person can have teams are generally few people so a couple of people working together in maybe 6 months or 7 months or something they can get a really good rank in competitions even if there is 1.2 million prize 3000 around 4000 people participated here other competitions not many 2000 1000 only those are your competition even when you are amongst the people who are better than half of the people in this competition you are still better than the most people in india students who are graduating they don't have knowledge they don't have expertise they don't have visibility and most importantly they don't have proof of their expertise simple certification is not going to be enough what we need is things like this which helps us get hired even if we lack experience
so hopefully it helps hopefully it helps you figure out how to go about uh you know learning if you want to learn by yourself we will uh, you know everyone who has registered for the session you will get a mail wherein we will you know send us some resources which can help you learn if you want to learn by yourself if you want to learn via a workshop we will tell you the way as well so uh, i thought let's just have a bit more discussions in case you know this one and a half hours long session becomes too much i thought let's keep it you know 50 minutes something for technical session from my side and then we can answer q and a or anything which might be uh, doubts you might be having or shirish can uh, also help us uh, tell what might be more valuable to you guys so i'll just conclude by saying i can only show you the door you are the one that has to walk through it and uh, from my side i can conclude uh, by saying thank you thank you so much so uh, ajinkya uh, there is a question from student uh, yes what kind of uh, different roles in data science are present what kind of different can you roles, repeat uh, as a data scientist oh okay so, so uh, uh, different roles of data scientist mm -hmm. yeah, yeah okay so, so uh, a good question guys there are a lot of different roles in data science we have someone who is in research so prakash did data science research job we can have someone who simply implements the solution so data science developer so developer is going to focus more on using the libraries to build a solution so focusing more on the solution we have someone who focuses more on analyzing the data so they ex they are expert in sql or they are expert in data mining more than data science modeling so different role contains data science researcher which is math heavy data science developer which is coding heavy data analyst which is sql heavy or you have business uh, analyst if you are not interested in coding at all you want to focus on the business how can data science help the business if you want to focus on that you have business analyst as well so at least 5 to 6 different types of data science roles are there and depending on your interest you can just pick whichever one uh, sounds better to you hopefully that helps there's another question any good book you can recommend achinkya for learning machine learning or also nidhi prakash like if anyone has good recommendations of books uh yeah so for machine learning one is by tom michel that is the most common book for any college student or one who is just starting their data science journey and the second i would uh, also say is uh, machine learning books by o'reilly these are also very great for uh, hands on and coding so these two books will give you a good start There's another question here from Piyush. What's the main reason to choose data scientist over software development engineer, I guess? Uh, I think there shouldn't be any reason to uh, choose data science against any job. It's about the skills to build. and the interest you carry on so at the end the data scientist is also a good engineer a good programmer with the skills in the data not the traditional programming so it is not a matter of comparison rather than it is the goal and the orientation you develop in yourself so and both are looks good to the industry it's not like more or less but since we are talking about data science here and it's a, it's a kind of a workshop on data science so almost all people are interested in it so then we can go to as a data scientist mean okay you love the data you love the data beyond the mathematics you understand the patterns visualize you can imagine it you can
connect the mathematical even a logical problem to the business it means you are you are more interested to become a data scientist but keeping in mind data scientist is also a very good programmer yes very rightly said means uh, we should not compare uh, other software development things with uh, data science everyone has their own interest and there are uh, infinite opportunities in other fields as well so right. we are just trying to give you information about data science because that's a current booming world yeah i hope that answers the question um also, there are two questions here now that are about the programming language. Um, so one is how important is, is R uh, in data science? And then the other question is, um, yeah, which one is more important, uh, Python or R? So someone maybe can One word, Python. <laughs> uh, going forward, Python is the default way now. Yes. And not only in data science, but also if the knowledge learned from that, you can uh, do different roles in the field of data science or even different roles in non-data science fields. Right. So if you choose Python, it will broaden your possible horizons, which you can attempt. So I would say choose Python. Yes. So who's using R then? Is it is it so yeah. that there may be researchers or it's, like? Uh, it's not like that. R is also being used pretty much, but uh, it's quite limited these days. And mostly in my experience, I have seen people from statistical background and biology background doing the research. They still uh, believe in the R and MATLAB and all these things. But as Ajinkya rightly said, because all nice libraries, frameworks, open source code, and the contribution from the whole global society is done in the Python. So that makes us to choose the Python. So you will you will have a lot of resources with you if you choose to learn the Python and go into data science. So it's not a R versus Python as in a programming language, but it is Python is definitely having an edge when it comes to the data science because there are people on the internet in terms of open source are ready to help you with their libraries, codes, and frameworks. So Python is the choice. Great. I hope that answers that question, Python versus R, which is quite common. Many medium uh, articles about that. Yeah. Um, so what else do we have here? Uh, I think there's a question also around the roles. More growth, data analyst or developer. Um, how can we? Answer is both actually. It's not like any of these roles are dying. <laughs> so you don't have to about uh, what is the growth of these roles. As long as you become a good uh, either developer or a data analyst, you won't have to worry about lack of opportunities. Rather, your problem will be I have too many opportunities. So that is the good problem to have. You know, which one do I choose? <laughs> that should be the problem. And that can happen not by uh, deciding, oh, which role has more future. Future is not on the role. Future is on you, the knowledge you have. <laughs> yes, that is rightly said. And I just try to uh, add a few words here that uh, do not get have a heavy influence by the role company offers. Do not choose the path by the role, but let, let domain and let subject choose you. So the best thing is that you go and play with the subject. It could be machine learning, deep learning, analyst, even a development. And end of your experience, you already know that which field you like. It means the field is choosing you. So let it be like that. So do not get influenced by the role, but let, let it be driven by data and your experience.
And what about like internships? Like what yes. is a good way of, especially now we are mostly students here and uh, yeah, they will look for internships in the field. Any advice, any tips, how you could land an internship? Yeah, so I can comment here uh, in terms of like, I have been a recruiter for my team as well. So, and Ajinkya already covered this point, but let me focus on a specific aspect that if you want internship, if you want a job in machine learning, you need to stand out. And standing out doesn't mean to be more intellectual or uh, having more intelligence. It's all about how did you pay the efforts in order to learn the machine learning, how well you organize your code, how much competition you have done on the Kaggle and other, anywhere else. That shows that you have done already, you are very much interested and willing to do it rather than just writing what you know and don't know in the CV doesn't make any sense. So if you want internship, then already feel yourself as a machine learning engineer, attend the problems, and once you get the result, keep it in your GitHub and then showcase in your CV. Then definitely you're going to get the internship wherever you want for sure. Yes, I, so I think I it's. Like it's to add one more here. Yeah, Sherish. So, uh, see, uh, when we are talking about standing out in the field, so currently we are seeing the boom of OTT platforms. So, Earlier only uh, film stars used to get attention. Now this field is booming with uh, people, uh, you can say series, then uh, movies on OTT platform. So different kind of opportunities are getting uh, given to uh, lower class as well. So it's not like uh, only the superstars are getting opportunities, uh, different other actors are also getting opportunities. And once they stand out in one of the series, the, they yeah. get hired by top platforms and they get uh, they become superstar. So uh, that's the way you should think. Uh, now opportunities are huge. You should right. just uh, start doing your stuff. Ultimately, you will get the best out of. Yeah, and I, and I think Ajinka has very nicely covered the being visible. What does it mean? So that was the section that one might again refer from this workshop which is already talking about that if you know something you need to tell the people and telling it doesn't mean to write on the cv but write the code and keep it in the github and write the competitions and have your results ready so that could be like you becoming a visible guy. so that should be like uh, uh, what i mean of standing out and also be be active in the community there many different communities um, around data science and be active there, participate, contribute. Um, there are also opportunities that come up um, through being involved in, in the community and not just like, yeah, sit at home and uh, send out uh, resumes to companies. Um, yes, you have to do this too. Um, but I think being active in the community is another way of potentially land, landing an internship and also show companies um, that uh, you are interested. And I think yeah, it seems like some people are interested also to hear more about your story, how you got into Google. Maybe you can share if you want a little bit how that happened. Um, were you always interested in, in joining Google or was it more like an accident? Like how did this happen? <laughs> So uh, many people do ask me uh, because they say that Google or Facebook or Amazon, they are their dream companies. But, you know, whenever someone says that, uh, what I feel like they have limited their dream. Uh, if you treat, let's say, a company like that, your starting point, then uh, it tells something about what is your mindset towards uh, approaching any stuff. So I, I actually uh, for me is like uh, these things are just consequence of my knowledge. I wasn't uh, applying for the roles. Uh, a recruiter from Google re approached me from uh, because of the post I was putting on LinkedIn. So I started as a trainer. Whatever I was doing, whether it was my curriculum design, how I taught, uh, number of courses I taught, all of these things, I was putting it on LinkedIn. And uh, my profile was visible through that to recruiters. 
and that is how that process got started so uh, as i said you know when i say that be visible it is not a advice which i am just doling out uh, without doing the same thing myself out of everyone here i would say my followers are highest and despite being that as a individual poster so you see having uh, knowledge which is as deep so that you know more than 20000 people want to follow you when you reach that state which you can reach in 6 to 8 months so it's like uh, then dream is is not that much difficult you know people think it's it's some impossible thing which someone has uh, made it like you know mission impossible was conquered when they get into that company it's not like that it's i would say incredibly simple just to efforts of one max two years <laughs> yeah so everyone like it is possible also joining one of those big companies if you want but it's also not the only way there are also a lot of companies out there smaller companies that offer very interesting work um so yeah don't get uh, too upset if it doesn't work out to join uh one of the big tech companies because there are many other opportunities out there as well and i think this one is a good question too that comes often um is it a good idea to go for um ms degree in ml or ai is it worth it um so what are the the opinions here should you really study for it for years or is there also other alternative ways and any any path you would recommend to students here so i will start by saying if you think that without ms or phd you won't get a job that is wrong you can get job even without ms or phd that is not a problem so if you still want to do it just because you want to learn then go for it so prakash is doing because he is interested uh, into going deeper i am going to do it in few years because i am interested not that i need uh, the phd name to get a job i got it irrespective of that so uh, but most common reason people go for ms is when you do ms from us you get uh, you can work there for 3 years before you get a visa whether it is h1b visa or some other kind of visa so working in a foreign country where you earn in dollars and you can do more saving back in india that is uh, one of a popular reasons of doing ms uh, you can do that as well but you see the um, the loan education loan which you might have to take all of these things are actually quite complex so if you decide to take let's say 6 months to completely focus on learning doing projects being visible these three things alone can get you a good job if not in india in europe or in other countries and then after 2 3 years of experience you can automatically get where you wanted to go uh, since beginning so i won't uh, it's like if money is crunch i won't recommend going the route of ms or phd but if not if it is not a problem then it's a great experience why not go for it <laughs> yeah but prakash maybe you want to share a little bit more also yes because uh, you started the phd program right. now like yeah, what is so what was your what were your reasons to to do that exactly so uh, it's a very same opinion i have like as in kya that uh, doing higher studies just to earn more or making more money is, it doesn't make sense because having experience and you already knowing the things is uh, pretty much good enough for you to continue in your job and doing research like myself I worked in the field after my masters and all for 10 years in Samsung research and in Japanese medical company pretty much everything same without doing PhD also I have been an inventor for more than 12 inventions and everything looks good and at this moment when people say yes all settled but I decided to go for a full time PhD degree in Sweden and the reason is because I love machine learning I want to know more about it that's the reason i am going for it i i quit my job and going for that because i want to have more interaction more intellectual and research interaction with the field it's not about the money it's not because those all can be done 
without PhD also. So if higher studies is about your interest and it makes you feel more complete, go for it. If it is about the money and if it is about ROI, just ROI in terms of dollars, then it might not be the best for sure. Because even without doing it, you can still get that much money. That is what we mean. Mm. Go ahead, Shirish. So, uh, whenever companies look for candidates, uh, they don't look for PhDs, MAs, or graduation. What they look for uh, your skills, uh, whether you are a problem solver or not. So, companies are solving problems for their clients. And they want to do it uh, continuously and uh, they cannot do it on their own continuously so they hire people and whenever they took, uh, take interviews they look for people who can solve any problem if you are a problem solver in this field or any other field you are a good candidate for employment anywhere so whenever you study look for this skill you need to solve problems at every level so if you can uh, think about any particular problem in your day-to-day -day life and you can uh, reach to a conclusion that this can be solved and you develop a solution for that uh, you can become an entrepreneur as well okay so that's my thesis. yeah i think that's a very good point and especially as students right you don't have that much experience yet and you can't really show to companies oh these are the companies i worked there before and that's Oftentimes the big problem for students where they apply for jobs or internships and companies are asking for a lot of experience, but you, you, you just graduated or you're still a student and it's difficult to, to show that. So coming back to the point, being visible, being active in the community, um, uh, have a GitHub page where, like Prakash said, like post all your, your things there, show that to companies. And that's actually even more important um, than to say like, yes, I did a, a master's and I learned all the theory uh, about it. Like really the, the hands-on part, the practical part is uh, much more important. And then, yeah, you can do a good job in the interview because you can really talk about the, the things you already did. And, and just to add, do you know that even after doing the master's, people are getting job then try to analyze. I, I'll give you the solution why they got the job. It's not they further studied few more books. Because in the MS, they have done some work, some practical work, which they can showcase it for their potential employers. That is the reason they have been hired. So if one thinks that doing MS will make a job, then it is only possible because in during MS also, you have to do the same. Mm -hmm. So keeping in mind that it's not the higher study just, it is the your exposure and your hard work and practical things you have, you are doing in your degree. That will make you to get a job, even after MS or what PhD whatsoever it is. So, so having practical hands-on, there's no like uh, alternate for that. And being, a, being, being an engineer, you are qualified to get any job if you know if, and if you can acquire those practical skills in this field. Also here there's a question about what skills um, do people need and I, I want to highlight one skill which is non-technical, the, the soft skills and I think they're also very important and sometimes not much talked about because at the end it it's teamwork, right? When you work at a company, um, you have to collaborate uh, with your peers, with other departments uh, and so on. So communication skills, very important. Um, presentation skills as well. So you want to convince others of your ideas um, and so on. So that's also something like in addition to the technical skills, um, Please also keep in mind that those soft skills are um, almost as important as actually being like a good programmer or coder. There's also questions. And then, um, uh, oh yeah, I'll check yeah. So yes, so uh, soft skill is important and uh, as long as you are open to learn, 
uh, you can learn anything you don't have to bring pre existing skills as long as you are open to learn you can learn whatever is the requirement so yan is from non technical background but you could say in terms of technical knowledge of data science he now has quite a lot so alongside communication skills you also nil need a open mind to learn as long as you have that intention uh, you can learn anything so you know i started from scratch i am a self taught data scientist prakash here learned by himself as well nidhi here and uh, so did yan so everyone here did not go for a degree to get data science right. knowledge we learned it on our own so don't be afraid of the oh i'm not from computer science background or oh i don't like coding or oh i don't have a degree uh, in you know masters in this don't uh, that thought process is actually not correct <laughs> and still you all are we all are engineers what else we need that that should be pretty sufficient i'll just give you a context that i have so many friends in japan actually and japan is the country they welcome the skills not the degree so more than 10 people even i know who are working potentially very successful position they are not even engineers and they working in the data science getting good salary and positions so those are the country which really just welcome the skills not the skills and when we compare ourselves to us yes we are at least already engineers so what else we need we are free to go for this field so that is all the all the skills you already have so it's all about the interest and like routine work on that part so that so never feel like uh, any restrictions about the background you have done being engineer is self sufficient to establish already right and, and we had two questions around machine learning versus deep learning where to start first um and uh, prakash maybe you want to yes. talk a little bit about like for people who want to get started like and and maybe very quickly also the difference between machine and and deep learning maybe not everyone knows that yes that that is again very uh, like quite a frequent question always and uh, i i answer this question by my own experience which i think it was good for me as well that uh, before deciding what specifically the field of machine learning you should go into that like whether it's a machine learning deep learning and today and tomorrow it would be reinforcement learning deep reinforcement do not get in get tangled into all these things first thing is that you should go for learning for basic machine learning and explore the field and while you are exploring forget about the boundaries it is something i am saying you to watch the globe without the boundaries of the countries and some day when you will land to a, a mass of a land and you like it then you can find what is the name of it or something it is the very same in my career i worked on classical machine learning problems in companies i worked on reinforcement learning deep learning and eventually i landed up that i am more aligned with the deep learning and i here i can do much more so it's so these all like because basics of the all these learnings are same actually it's all about learning from the data so do not get tensed about which should be better for you and which should be better for the job it's all about you explore each and everything and being a student or a new grade like fresh grades it is important time that you explore it now because after 5 years you will not get chance you already have some tags with you and you will go with that so do not restrict yourself explore all the field of machine learning and then answer will be come from within you that which is suitable for you rather than like anyone do not let anyone guide you that deep learning is good for you or whatever it is good for you and when it comes to the difference yes classical machine learning is the backbone for everything we do most of the time all this competition everything and deep learning is nothing different but it is also in machine learning but mostly more specific developed and research branch on text and the, and the videos and reinforcement learning it's about you want to you want to modulate a problem as an environment just like a real game ajinkya was talking about chess 
AlphaGo, all these are reinforcement learning problems. So do not get labeled by the problems or the subject. Just explore the field and you will find your attachment and your skills best matching and go for it. So better in early stage, explore it and then go for it. So don't choose it, just learn anyways. Yeah, that's great. I hope that answers uh, questions around machine learning, deep learning, what direction um, you should go. We also had a couple of questions around like where people should start learning if they want to go for self-study. Maybe Nidhi, you want to share a little bit like where you learned uh, machine learning and um, some maybe there's some advice for, for people here who want to get started right away. Yeah, definitely. So uh, again, as I started, I started with online learning itself. Uh, so I had to get all of my basic maths uh, clear just for the sake of uh, learning the algorithm. So what I did was I brushed up my basic math skills on Khan Academy. That hardly takes uh, a few weeks to brush up your skills. And it's not very difficult. It's a very fun way to learn. Uh, that is one thing. And if you also are new to coding or something, if you've not done that before, then there are a great Python free courses online. So uh, there are great ones on Coursera, on Udemy, and all of that. Apart from that, uh, from machine learning, uh, again, what I did was uh, I, I started with two, three different courses because each had a different focus. Uh, one was focused on theory, one was focused on coding, and so on. So. Um, yeah, you have to sort of explore. Uh, basically, uh, again, as usual, as all the suggestions were there, I started with the Andrew NG course, which was quite uh, algorithmic and math heavy. But that helped me sort of uh, make it easy for all of my future courses as well. And um, going ahead, it's not just uh, the courses that you do. You have to also practice side by side a lot. So say you learned one concept from machine learning algorithms that is logistic regression. So just don't sit with that knowledge in your head. Just go and practice one small code. Take a normal data set from the internet and see how you can apply it, um, what knowledge you've learned in that way. Uh, again, uh, posting on Kaggle, on GitHub, these are all the sources um, that helped me. And right now, we've also come up with our own Udemy course, um, which is based on focused on thought process so that you can take that thought process and apply it to any project that you want to solve. And it also has a, a good number of coding examples, so it can help you in your journey. Great. I hope that answers the question as well. There are many resources on the web um, where you can learn for free. You don't even have to, to pay. Um, so, but then there are also, yeah, courses, paid courses that are quite affordable, um, that are a little bit more structured, uh, as well. And like Nidhi said, we also have a course on Udemy from data driven science. You can check this out, um, if you're interested, um, in learning more and go a little bit deeper. So Jan will compile those resources and you'll get an email from us with those details. So don't worry, you won't have to remember it. You'll get that info and step-by-step -step guide. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, I will send out an, an email after the, the session. Um, you can also re-watch um, this, this webinar. So it will stay here on, on YouTube. You can reach it through the same link. But like Achinka said, I will compile an email and send it out to everyone and uh, also link then to some of the resources uh, we recommend. Yeah, I think we are coming to an end of the of this session of the webinar. I really hope you guys in, enjoyed it. Uh, you learned something. It became a little bit more clear how to start um, in learning data science. I hope you're excited about the field. Um, and uh, yeah, anything, Shirish, you want to say also a few last words? So, uh, Jan and Ajinke and Nidhi and uh, really thanks for this uh, detailed guidance. Uh, students always require this kind of guidance because uh, when we study, we don't know what path we are going to take in the future. So, we are always curious about uh, in which career we should be going. And uh, currently, the booming field is data science and everyone wants to know more about it. 
and you do fantastic stuff on data science. And thanks for sharing your expertise here uh, with the same College of Engineering. Great. I think that concludes. Um, and uh, yeah, have a great Saturday and weekend, everyone. And please, let's stay in touch. And you can always reach out to us um, through our, and please follow us also on our social media channels. Just want to do some self-promotion here, uh, where we also share a lot of um, free content. Uh, so if you want to learn more, um, please follow us and you can also reach out through those channels to us if you have any more specific questions we're more than happy to answer them then as well all right bye everyone i will end the session here now <laughs>